Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Bwana asifiwe tena. Asifiwe sana. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching us from around the world. Oh yes. Welcome to Hope Church Lavington. We are a vibrant and a passionate church that is changing the world for Christ. Amen. Amen. My name is Pastor Benjamin Otieno, services and worship pastor and joining me today is who? Careful Charles. Careful Charles. Yeah, Tune them band reggae. If you like some oh, reggae, yes. follow these guys. Amen. <laughs> Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our service this morning. We want to start off by worshiping God. And I invite you to just take time and just, you know, get your room ready, get your space ready. We want to believe that our God is able. Yeah? Hallelujah. Amen. He says in his word that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. Amen. So if you believe that God is able in your house, right there, wherever you're sitting, say amen. amen. Say amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you. That indeed you're here in this place. In this oh, place. Yes. You said in your word, that whenever two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of God. So yes, we welcome Lord. your presence wherever we are around the world, oh God, that indeed you may minister to us at our point of need, oh God. Yes, so we, yes. we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. And all God's students say that. Amen. Come on, put your hands together wherever you are. Come on, come on. Hey, 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 oh, oh. Oh, yeah. I want you to dance a bit today. Come on, come on. We just want to believe that he's able today. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Song simply says, Mungu aweza fanya kile ali josema atatimiza kila hali kwa ko. Let me see. Usife moyo Always, Come on, sing with us. Mungu, Mungu, aweza fanya kile ali
wherever you are, say, Always give God glory, Jesus, because we know that He's a good God. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, oh. We yeah. declare. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He makes a way where there seems Come to on, be no way. Come on, declare no like. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He makes a way where there seems to be My no God. way. My God, He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He makes a way where there seems to be no Say. way. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He makes a way where there seems He'll to be no way. He'll buy the waters for you. He'll make hey. a way. He makes a way where there seems He'll to be no way. He'll heal your wounds. of my hands. Yes, Lord. I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. Yes. He says he's Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. So right now I want you to pray over your life that just declare oh, that God is making a way for you. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you that your presence never leaves us. Yes, Lord. Just yes, like Lord. you promised yes, Lord. Moses yes, and the children of Israel that you will never leave them. 
Moses said that Lord I will not go until you go with us yes, no. so father we will not move until you move we with us move, we will stand on the rock that is eternal that's Lord Jesus right, that's right, the Lord. rock that is our salvation yes you are God you are king oh Jesus yes Lord. and so we worship you hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. in Jesus name we pray Come on, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to just take us this time and just ask you, even wherever you are right now, that if you if you just continue with the heart of worship and just be, prepare your hearts to give. Because God says that God, He loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He loves a cheerful giver. Every, every single thing that you give helps the ministry move forward, helps, helps the ministry achieve its goals. Hallelujah. Right, yeah. Because we, we have our tithes and offering uh, account. I believe it's on the screen right now. And you can, you can send your tithes and your offerings there. Uh, God says that when you, when you tithe and when you put, put, bring your offerings, he will open up the, 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 the window of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. So I believe that he's pouring out a blessing upon your life, upon your family, upon each and every member of your family today. Yes. Amen. He will keep the devourer away from you. So when you tithe, God, God comes and, you know, he protects you. He covers you. Hallelujah. That's right. So wherever you are, just prepare to give. We also have a giving back uh, account. Uh, and this just helps us as a church to give back to the community. Uh, right. This time during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we've been giving out foods uh, to families, uh, people who have been in need, people yes. who have been locked out of their houses. We've been able to help those people. And we, we believe that God is moving in this place and you are part of that today. Amen. So I want you to tithe. I want you to send your, uh, your gifts to uh, your, your, your giving back offering to uh, the account numbers on the screen. And if you're watching from way above, way above Kenya, way, way, uko, 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 where, where we need to get a plane. <laughs> Our PayPal address is also there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hope Church Nairobi at gmail.com. You can, you can send through PayPal account as well. So I pray and I believe that you are going to have a, a blessed week to come, even as we continue with the word of God today. Amen. Amen. Pastor Fred is ready to bring the word. He's oh, charged yes. up. He's ready to, you know, bring it to you. We are talking about what? The search for God and I believe we will find him through what he has in store for us today so God bless you prepare your hearts for that in Jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you so much uh, Pastor Benjamin and the worship team and I want to particularly welcome you our viewer from wherever you're watching us from uh, welcome to this service. My name is Fred Imbai, the Discipleship and Care Pastor here at Hope Church Lovington, and I'm very happy and glad that you have joined us today as we learn about God, as we search for Him, even as we continue with our sermon series this month, the search for God. I just want to do a recap of uh, last week's uh, sermon, and then we can move on to what God has in store for us today. Uh, before I do that, let me ask that we uh, join together in, in prayer, even as we start. Lord, I thank you for my, the, my viewers today. I thank you for uh, my listener today. I thank you uh, for those who are watching us from home, from, for those who are watching us from um, Riverside TV. We pray that, Lord, even as we hear from your word, may you open our understanding, incline our ears to your word, to want to do what you have in store for us today. So bless our time together, even as we hear from you. Give us understanding. Uh, may you make us receptive to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, last week we began our sermon series, The Search for God. And we looked at uh, four things that uh, would make us easily drift away from God, run away from God. And the first thing we looked at last Sunday was, number one, was guilt and shame. The people who, uh, people who are feeling guilty and shameful and they don't feel like coming back to God. So that makes them run away from God even more. And we learned that uh, God is saying to us, we can come and reason together and settle these matters with him and he's willing and ready to accept us and to forgive us and, I mean, to make our lives, uh, restore back our lives. The second thing we looked at was, was abundance. 
sorry, uh, abundance, yes. Abundance can easily make us drift away from God. And we looked at a verse in Proverbs that Solomon wrote and said, do not give me too little that I may steal or too much that I may forget about you. So it is very easy that abundance can easily drift away from God. And we looked at how God wants us to still trust us, trust him rather, with our wealth, with our, um, with our richness, with our wealth. God wants us to still look to him and trust him. We also looked at disappointments. These are the things that can easily um, drift us away from God. You have trusted God, but he has not answered your prayers. Things are breaking left, right, and center. And you feel of, no, of what use is it to trust God. And we looked at what God says in his word. He says, come to me, all you labor, all you who are heavy burden, and God will give us rest. And the call for us was to continue trusting in him, even as disappointments disappointments come. The last thing we looked at last, uh, last Sunday was the value for the world and the value for self. And how when you value yourself more than you value God, and when you value the world, that, that can easily uh, make you run away from God or deviate from God. And God reminded us in his word that enmity, friendship with the world is enmity with God. And so from those four points, we started uh, I mean, this sermon series, The Search for God. And I believe you are encouraged and you are made better. Now today, we want to look at a sermon, a, 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 a sermon that I have titled, What It Means to Search for God. Now, last Sunday we looked at the things that make us run away from God or would make us run away from God. Now, what does it mean to search for God? I mean, that is a question I know most of us would want answers to. What does it really mean to search for God? The things that we do, do they count for searching for God? Let us look at a verse in the book of uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. This verse says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. This is what God says, that it is possible for us to find him when we seek him with all our hearts. So what does it mean to seek God? And what does it mean to seek him with all our hearts? God has given us a promise here that he can be found. And the reason why he can be found, the only reason why he can be found is if we search for him, if we seek him with all our hearts. I want to look at the things that we have been doing in pursuit of God, the things that we think uh, have counted to us seeking or searching for God. And I want to look at that, do these things really count to seeking God? The things we have done here and there, the, the activities we have uh, been involved in those things that we have done that we may make us think we are searching for God but are not. And I want to read a verse in Isaiah 29 13. This verse says, The Lord says, If these people come to me, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. So, in other words, it is possible to do all these things that we're going to look at. But these things do not necessarily count to seeking God. And remember our title today, what does it really mean to seek God? And so as we do these things, are we really seeking God? Because God says we come to him, we honor him with our mouths, but our hearts are far away from him. So what does it mean to come to him and seek him with all our hearts? And so I want to give a few reasons why some of us even go to church. The first reason is some of us are addicted to church. I mean, just going to a place where people are gathered is an addiction. And some of us are also addicted to the traditions that we do in church here and there, singing hymns, you know, um, kneeling down, worshiping, lifting up our hands. People are addicted to that. And we may tend to think doing those things equates to searching God. Yes, they are good things. However, only those things alone do not equate to searching for God. Remember the verse in Isaiah that these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from God. A verse in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus talks about the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are this kind of people. They load people with so many traditions and they like to be seen in public places wearing very long robes and doing all these things. And Jesus warns against this kind of people because they do all these things but their hearts are not with God. They are doing these things to be seen by men. 
And some of us have gone to church and have lifted up our hands. Some of us have knelt down, but God sees our hearts and he can surely see that maybe all these things are just about actions, but your heart is not with him. And so some people come to church because they're addicted to traditions, you know, singing hymns, you know, taking the, uh, the Lord's bread, all these things. Another reason why some of us would go to church in the name of seeking God is we think God is only found in, in buildings. We have loved the majestic buildings that have been, you know, our, our churches are, are, have, rather. I mean, very good, magnificent, magnificent buildings. And we think, I mean, God is in that building. And so for us to find God, we have gone to these buildings. But remember, Acts chapter 17, 24 to 25, the Bible says God does not live in temples built by human hands. And this season has reminded us that God does not live in a building. God lives in our hearts. God has a dwelling place in our hearts. And so for those of us who have gone to church, to a building, and we thought we have sought God, God does not dwell in temples built by human hands. Some of us like the religious feeling that comes with going to, to church, you know. Um, just feeling holy, I mean, good music, and you're feeling nice about it. And that has, for some people, meant uh, seeking God. However, Second Timothy 3, 3 to 5, the Bible says, In the last days, people will have a form of godliness, but deny its power. And for some of us, church is a place where we meet friends and relatives. Maybe because of business, because of, you know, your own agendas. Maybe it's a place you go to, you know, find a girlfriend, a boyfriend, uh, meet a potential business client. So for, for many of us, church has been, for some of us, church has been used for our own personal gains. Maybe for young, some of the young people, they have gone there just to, you know, expose themselves to people who would give them jobs, for example. Uh, some of them have gone to, you know, um, they can get, easily get places where they can exercise their skills. And as the time goes by, they become very good at these skills, maybe music, and sooner or later they are they're gone. We have so many cases of stories of people who began their careers in church, and right now they're not in church. In other words, they have used church as a place to advance and grow their careers and their skills and their businesses. And when that has happened, they have disappeared. And so many things we have done or said and thought that for us, these things have meant a searching God. An example Jesus gives with the two sisters, Martha and Mary. He comes to visit them, and one is very busy in the kitchen. And Jesus calls them. I mean, she complains about the other one who is sitting at Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, this one is more blessed. And so... Even the business, the activities, you can all do all these things in, in church, but that does not even equate to seeking God. So three things must happen for us to start searching God. And the first thing is we must, we must first believe that he exists. You know, uh, Psalms chapter 53 and chapter 14, the Bible says a fool has said in his heart that there is no God. But for us to even start searching and seeking God, Number one, we must believe that God exists. You know, Hebrews 11:6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Remember the promise in Jeremiah 29, 13, that you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. And so if for us who want to really search for God, the first thing that must happen for that to be uh, a reality is that we must come to him believing that this God exists. The God that I want to have a relationship with exists. The second thing that must happen for us to even start touching God is we must find value in him to start chasing him. Chasing him. I mean, do you see any importance in pursuing after God? Do you see any meaning in searching after God? I Last Sunday we looked at the things we have, the thing, how we value the things. I mean, the things we do to the things we value. We invest in them. We give them time. We give them priorities. And for us to start searching God, we have to place value in God for us to find him. 
the third thing we have to do that must happen for us to start searching God is we must be sure. We must be sure that we can have a relationship with him. Otherwise, of what use would be would it be if we search a God who is not interested in you? A God who is who doesn't care, a God who doesn't want a, a relationship with you. And for us to start searching God, we must be sure that this God wants a relationship with me. John 3, 6, 16, the Bible says that for God so loved the world. God loved you, God loved me, God loves us, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him will have everlasting life. This God, I must tell you today, is very interested in this relationship. He's not a God who, when you call, he will, you know, hang up on you. He's not a God, a God who, when you try and chase, I mean, he's playing hard to get. No, God is very interested in having this relationship with you. Remember, like I said, we must believe that he exists. We must place value in him. We must value him for us to start chasing, chasing him. And we must be sure that he wants a relationship with him. The Bible promises that God really wants a relationship with us. So having said all these things, uh, I want to answer your question now. What are some of the practical ways to search for God? What can I do? What can you do to start searching for God? I want to share with us four things that we can practically do that will help us to search God. I am not giving us a formula, but I'm just giving you a means and these things, when you continue doing them, will help us to find God. The first thing that we must do is we must show up. We must show up. We show up for the people we love. I mean, you go to birthdays, um, you take the people you love maybe out, you are there, you're present. And if God is of value to you, you will show up. So the first thing for us to do to seek or search for God is we must show up. James 4, it says that draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And I want you to know this, this morning or this day, that it is impossible to know someone in just one encounter. Some of us show up once in a while, once in a year. I know of people who come to church in, you know, the 1st of January, the 31st of January, over Easter and over Christmas only. Those are the times you want to come to church. It doesn't work like that. You cannot learn to hear God's will without making an effort. And this effort is showing up, being there, being there in prayer. When was the last time you encountered God in prayer? Being there through a Bible study group, a Bible study, personal Bible study. Being there, showing up through fasting and serving God. You have to show up for you to know this God. Like I said, it is impossible to know someone in one encounter. If I give an example of a marriage, rarely do people who do not know each other get married. You get married to someone you know. Someone you know who's someone whose habits, whose character, whose, you know, the way they are happy you get, you know, you know all these things about them. That applies to our relationship with God. God can be known. And we cannot know God in just one encounter. And so for us today who are listening to me, showing up would mean looking at your prayer life. I mean when was the last time you prayed? How frequent do you pray? Bible study. When was the last time you held a Bible and just did a personal Bible study? Fasting. Some of us have never fasted. Since the day you were born, you have eaten all this. I mean, it is not just a tradition we are doing here, but fasting is an act of humility to show that I want you, God. I really need you. God has given us gifts and talents. Can we show up by serving him? So when you start doing these things, we start drawing closer and closer to God. The second thing we must do to start pursuing God is we have to give up something, even as we search for God. Jesus gives a very interesting a parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then, in his joy, went out and sold all he had and bought that field. He gives another parable in the same chapter, chapter 13, verse 45. Again, the kingdom of God is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything and bought it. Remember, for us to start searching God, we must place value 
in him. And this parable right here reminds us, reminds us that for us to follow God, we must give up something. We must give up of friends who would easily make us, I mean, not follow God. We must give up of a relation, a relationships that make us run away from God. We must give up of goals that do not bring us closer to God. We must give up of business that hinders us from knowing God. We must also give up of lifestyles that make us not know God. I don't know what your life is right now. Maybe you are so busy, extremely busy. Maybe your goals are deterring you from knowing God. Maybe your lifestyle or your relationships, whatever it is, your friends, all these things that are making you not, I mean, do not allow you to know God. We have to give up something to pursue to pursue God. Luke chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus gives another interesting example. He says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. In other words, he is not really talking about literally hating people, but he's saying, if you cannot place him above these people, we are not worthy of being his disciples. And among these people is yourself. He says, even your own life, such a person is not worthy to be my disciple. So what do you need to give up for the search of God? He also gives another example in Matthew 10, 37. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Maybe you love your job more than you love God. Maybe you love your activities, your life, business more than you love God. Maybe you love your friends. Maybe you love your relationships, your goals more than you love God. For us to search God, we must give up something in pursuit of God. We must give up our pride. We must give up our comforts. I want you to realize this morning that a genuine search for God, if you're really genuine about searching for God, that will order, that will reorder and alter your life. It will not be the same. Something has to change for you to pursue God. So number one, I said, show up. We need to be there, present. Number two, give up something in pursuit of God. The third thing I will share with us is that we have to shut up and listen. For us to search for God, we have to shut up and listen. Proverbs 21 verse 1 to 5 talks about the benefits that come with listening to wisdom. Benefits that come with listening to God. Many times God speaks to us through experiences, through friends, through his sermons, through songs. But we are not there to listen and follow what he says. And for us to have this amazing relationship with God. For us to find him. For us to find him. We have to shut up and listen to what he says. When he speaks, we have to hear. In the book of Psalms 25, verse 4 to 5, David talks about a very interesting uh, thing that I came to realize the other day. He says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me and teach me. For you are my God and my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. In other words, we must be, we must be very excited to quickly obey what God has, has said. Obedience to God should not be a burden to us. Maybe some of us look at obedience as something you have been forced to do. I mean, given an option, you do something else. And I want you to know today that partial obedience is disobedience. When you only obey because you have been coerced, that is not obedience. Obedience, obedience is what that is. Good obedience comes from, I mean, being happy and excited about wanting to please God. Do you look forward to obeying what God is telling you about your marriage, about your job, about your friends? And I want you to know today, God wants you to listen to him in all areas of your life. So open up the Bible and read it and listen to him and follow what he says in all areas of our, of our lives. Some of us are in the habit of just reading the things that want, I mean, make us happy, the things that please us. But God is in the business of total obedience. We should not look at the Bible selectively or read the Bible selectively. Only do the things that, you know, have blessings and favors and, and goodness, all the things we look for. 
by the things that hit us hard about our character, about our lives. You know, we don't want to read those things. And so we must listen to God. When he, says, uh, when he tells us to do difficult things, we have to do those difficult things, not just the easy ones. So we must be happy and excited to obey God and not look at his commandments as something that has been forced on us. And we do it because, you know, you don't have a choice. So shut up and listen. What is God saying about your marriage situation right now? What is God saying about your business? What is God saying about your character? What is God saying about your country? What is God saying about you in general? For us to find God and for us to search him. For us to search him and find him means shutting up and listening to what he says. Total surrender. Total obedience, rather. The fourth and the last thing that would help us to search God is we need to open up and look to God. Open up and look to God. We love being in control and, you know, we love wanting to do, determining what to do with our own lives. We want to do our own things, you know. And many times we want to direct our own lives. But seeking God means allowing God to run your life however he wants. Opening up to him and surrendering our, surrendering our lives to him. We need to open up to him about our pains, our fears, our, tr- our troubles, our struggles, and our shame. I want you to know, my listener today, that our relationship with God will not succeed if you are not vulnerable to him. And we are weak. I mean, if you read the Bible, that is what he says, we are weak. We cannot do anything on our own. So we need him. And so we need to go to God and open up to him and allow him to run our lives the way he wants. So trust him with your decisions, the decisions you need to make, whatever they are. Go to him and ask, and ask him. Trust him with your worries and fears. Let him have control of your life. Surrender totally to him. These four things will help us to search for him and to find him. Number one, show up. Show up for services. Show up for your devotion life. Show up for prayer. Show up for these things. Serve him. Be there. Number two, <clears throat> Number two, give up something. What? Something has to be given up in pursuit of God. I mean, you cannot love God and money or something else at the same time. Something has to be given up. Number three, we have said, shut up and listen. Number four, open up and look to God. And so even as I conclude this, I don't know where you are in your search for God. But I want you to know you have to do something Something has to be done for you to continue, for you to find God. And you can't be fake about it. So maybe I'm speaking to someone who is very far away from God. You have not even begun searching for him. And the call for you today is to connect, to connect with him. He has invited you to connect with him. Um, Maybe I'm speaking to someone who has, maybe you have tried searching for him and you have slept and have forgotten and have fallen from your first love. God is calling you back to him that you may start and continue this amazing relationship you had with him again. Or maybe I'm speaking to someone who is already doing these things and they are actively pursuing and searching for God. I don't want you to give up. I want you to continue. Continue searching for him. I mean, you cannot, he cannot be fully known and the amazing things that God has, has for us. So if I'm speaking to you this morning, or this afternoon, whatever time it is, these four things. Show up. Show up before the presence of God. Shut up and listen. Give up something to follow him. Open up and look to him. So I want to pray for you even as you continue in search of God. Lord, I'm praying for whoever is listening to me and they have not given their lives to you. They have not begun this search for you. Lord, I'm praying that you may call them May you disturb them, Lord. May you invite them to your, your throne, to your place of grace, O oh God. May, they, may you help them to find someone they can walk with, O oh God. Someone who will guide them through this relationship. Lord, I'm speaking to someone who once loved you and was committed to you. And as of now, Lord, they are they're deviating, they're falling apart, Lord. I pray that Father may bring them back. 
Lord, I'm speaking to someone who is actively searching for you. I pray that, Lord, they will never give up. The Lord, they will not stop searching for you. May you continue working with them. Continue building them up, oh God. Continue fostering this relationship. Continue making it better and better, oh God. Lord, you have a promise for us that we will find you. And so whatever it means to find you, Lord, I pray that we will not stop finding and searching for you. Lord, you are bigger than us. You have amazing plans for our lives. And I pray that in our pursuit of you, we will start realizing and seeing these things. You have promised us a reward if we search for you, Lord. So let us not give up. Let us search for you diligently. Not just with our mouths, Lord, with our lips, but our hearts, Lord, fully committed and fully surrendering to you. And so I thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen. I hope you have enjoyed. May God bless you. See you again next Sunday.